Good morning and welcome to worship here at the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. We are so glad that you can join us wherever you may be. And we hope that you will be truly uplifted by the music of our jazz musicians this morning. And now let us join together in our responsive call to worship. People of God, listen and be glad. The Lord has done marvelous things. Let us teach our children all God has done. So, so that, that we may live in hope. Children of the covenant, revere the Lord and choose this day whom you will serve. With sincerity and faithfulness, we will serve the Lord. One day Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, there are two, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, all the law and the prophets came down to those two commandments, loving God and loving your neighbor. But we don't always love God and we don't always love our neighbor. But we know that when we confess our sins to God, we can receive the gift of grace that comes in forgiveness and in the grace of Jesus Christ. As we confess, I'd ask that we pray together the prayer that's found in the bulletin, and at the conclusion of that, we pray silently to confess our sins. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, you are all light and wonder and glory. You lead us faithfully through life's trials and give us all we need to live. In response, you call us to cling only to you and to serve you with sincerity and humility. Yet we are distracted by all that glitters. Our allegiance bends too easily in other directions, driven by our fear and anxiety, our self-interest and greed. When choosing you and your ways grows difficult, we prefer to maintain our comfort and the well-established ways of the world. Forgive us, Lord. Cover us with your grace and overwhelm us with your love so that our hearts incline only to you and we see no other choice but to walk in your ways of justice and peace. In the name of our Savior, we pray. Amen.
hear the good news. Nothing, Nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Believe the gospel. We, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. in a house with other people, we have to follow some rules. And sometimes it's hard to remember all those rules. So sometimes your parents might say things like, eat your vegetables, or they might say, brush your teeth, or they might say, clean your room, or they might say this a lot, be nice to your brothers and sisters. Now they don't just say it once, right? And then you do it and you're just a perfect angel. They have to say it a lot of times, right? And sometimes it gets annoying. But honestly and truly, the more you hear it, the more it sinks in, and then finally, it seems like they don't have to say that so much. Well, in our Bible story today, Joshua is leading the Israelites. He's been with them for some time, and he gathers them all together to talk to them about all of the wonderful things that God has done for them all of the things he's done to save them throughout the years. He tells them many, many times in different ways that they must serve only one God, the God that has watched over them. Joshua is really trying hard to tell the people that if they love and serve their God, they'll continue to have happy lives. But if they don't follow God, they're really gonna be miserable and they'll certainly disappoint God, which you never wanna do. The people of Israel are called children of God. And just like children, Joshua has to keep reminding them of all of the things that they should be doing. Now we need to be reminded too, to love God, to pray to God, and to love one another as we love ourselves. Let's be our best. Let's listen and do what's right. Let's try and be the best we can be for our God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us, for loving us and providing for us. Please help us to remember to honor you by loving one another and treating each other with kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With our children and future in our hearts and minds, we are pleased to announce the theme of our 2021 stewardship campaign. Our children, our community, our commitment. A little over a year ago, there was a desire from some of our members to launch a group for young professionals in the area who needed support as they graduated from college and entered into the workforce for the first time. Since then, we've had a great group of 20s and 30s that have met weekly or bi-monthly at the Howard House, either indoors or outdoors, on Zoom, or most recently at the Famish Frog. We're currently discussing The Sin of Certainty by Peter Enns, which discusses what happens when our faith meets opportunities for resilience. We have a great mix of faithful church members and those who are still new to the Morristown area. We're excited to see where the Lord will lead our young professionals. These compelling programs, our devoted clergy and staff, are brought to you by the generosity of our congregations, stewardship pledges, and contributions, and through gifts from members and friends. Over the next few weeks, you will learn how to participate in the 2021 Stewardship Campaign. Check your home mailbox, visit our social media channels, or stop by the website to learn more and to make a pledge via Breeze. We ask you to listen, to embrace, to get involved, and to pledge financially and to pray for God's guidance and direction. God bless. 
Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us of your promises that we might hear your truth and enjoy you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 1 through 3a, and verses 14 through 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord, our God, who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord, our God, we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Are you as spent as I am? Do you feel wrung out like you have nothing left? This year, this month, this week have been exhausting. And as of this taping, it's only Wednesday. I imagine by the time you are viewing it on Sunday, the feeling will have only grown. Election day has come and gone, and as many expected, we are still waiting, breathless, to see what will happen. Who will win and what will be the repercussions? A fault line has steadily cracked through our corporate lives, and now we straddle it wondering if this is the moment the big one will crumble the rest of life as we know it. As a nation, we have spent years steeped in disdain, deaf rage, and dehumanizing polarization. The taint of this ugliness has leached its way into virtually everything, and it steadily tries to eat away at the very soul. Everyone I know has a friendship or a family relationship damaged by this fault line. And no matter the outcome of this election, 
the poisonous atmosphere we have been breathing will not just miraculously disappear. We also live in a world that continuously calls us to bow at many altars of money, power, prestige, nationalism, military might, capitalism, consumerism, individualism, and white supremacy, just to name a few. These gods parade before us brazenly, beating their drums and demanding their tribute. To refuse bears heavy consequences. It always has. And as the voice of modern polytheism grows louder, it only becomes more taxing and more difficult to try to live differently to align your life by another compass, to proclaim a counter narrative, and to swim against the prevailing cultural currents. Opting out takes far more energy than opting in. Thus, exhaustion. In the midst of this precarious and charged moment in which we stand, filled as it is with angry clamor and our weary souls, Joshua's words ring out to us with the hope and the challenge to fix our eyes elsewhere. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose. Joshua calls us back to the Lord. He calls us to recommit our lives to the God of our liberation, the God of justice, the God of faithful provision, the God who hears the cries of the lost and downtrodden over and above those of the powerful and responds with love and compassion. Joshua calls us away from the tantalizing gods of our surrounding culture to the one true God who is the only path to the healing, hope, and wholeness we so desperately desire and need. Joshua knew that making a choice for God is never a one-time thing. It is a commitment that needs constant re-examination and constant renewal. It is the sum of a million little choices made every day. He also knew that we're as likely as not to mess it up on a regular basis. This passage comes from the very end of the book of Joshua. When Joshua was preparing to take his final leave of the people and to disperse them to their inherited lands. They have crossed the river Jordan while God miraculously held back the waters and they have claimed the promise God has made to them. They have triumphed in battle. The promised land is theirs, a home after all their years of wandering. This moment in Shechem is the true end of the Exodus journey. The last time the entire people of Israel will be gathered together in this way. And they are about to go off and live among people for whom polytheism is still the norm. The temptations will be many. Their calling will be hard. So Joshua takes this moment to once again renew the people's covenant commitment to God. Joshua knew his people's track record. They have gone back on their promises to God time and time again and returned to worshiping idols. They have chosen the easier path of conforming with those around them. Joshua knows them so well, in fact, that no sooner do the people promise to serve the Lord than he turns around and tells them they cannot possibly do it. He reminds them this is not a choice to be made lightly. God will not like it if they try to play both sides. Three times, therefore, 
The people of Israel must swear their commitment to God before Joshua sets the covenant in stone and lets them go. Israel was at a turning point in their history as they transitioned from being a wandering wilderness people to a settled promised land people. It was an appropriate moment to renew their choice for God. We too are standing at a turning point, though we may not yet know which direction we are going. As we consider again whom we will decide to serve, let us also consider what our choice really means. Dorothy Day once said, I love God as much as the person I love the least. This is where our choice for God, where our faith takes root and grows, or it doesn't. In how we respond to our neighbors, particularly the neighbors we like the least. So I invite you to think for a moment who do you love the least right now? In the contentious days we've been living through, who is the person that makes you choke back tears of rage? Who is the one whose words and actions turn your stomach? Can you picture them? Can you feel again all the emotions they stir up in you? Sit with that for just a moment. Now consider if you are making a choice today to recommit yourself to God, how are you being called to respond to that person? How will your love for God get bound up and expressed in your behavior to that person? Now I invite you to think for a moment about all the people our society loves the least. Perhaps it's immigrant children permanently separated from their parents and locked in cages. Perhaps it's Walter Wallace or the other black men and women shot by police in recent months. Perhaps it's the over 25,000 households right here in Morris County who live in the precarious position of spending 50% or more of their income on their housing because costs are so high. Perhaps it's the person awaiting treatment in the ER because it's the only place they can receive any help without providing proof of health insurance. Perhaps it's an LGBT couple fearful of losing their marriage rights and even more their human rights. Perhaps it's the workers whose livelihoods and identities depend on an industry the modern world no longer wants or needs. Perhaps it's the African Americans in Morris County who are 22 times more likely to face incarceration than whites. Perhaps it's the chronically homeless who may struggle to find enough places to stay warm this winter with COVID-19 restrictions. Whoever comes to your mind, take a moment to think about those people our society loves the least. Can you picture them? Can you hear their voices? Can you feel the emotions they stir up in you? Sit with that for a moment. Now consider, 
if you are making a choice today to recommit yourself to God, how are you being called to respond to these people? How will your love for God get bound up and expressed in your behavior toward these people? Choose this day whom you will serve. Joshua's words cry out to us in this pivotal moment. Choose this day how you will love the least loved. Choose this day how you will serve those God cares about. The lost, the oppressed, the cast aside, the reviled. Choose this day how you will look, not through your own eyes, but through God's eyes, and respond with God's love and compassion. Our calling remains the same no matter what happens in the days and weeks to come. Through every election, through every presidency, through every economy, through this pandemic, through an eventual vaccine, through our separation, through our togetherness. We are called to revere the Lord and to serve God with sincerity and faithfulness. That is the harder road, the countercultural road, the road that calls us toward people we might rather avoid. But it is the only road that can carry us safely forward from this fault line into a future of wholeness and hope. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we are exhausted, puzzled, and apprehensive. Whenever we come to elections, we are a mixture of feelings. All of us look at the challenges facing America from different perspectives. Many of us are sure that the way we see the future is the way it needs to unfold. Our neighbor who lives on the same street as us disagrees and holds her view as strongly as we do. We look for your guidance, your understanding, as we consider the divisions within our nation. Give us ears to listen to our neighbor. Give us eyes to see the ways we can learn to cooperate with one another. Open our minds so that we can see that all of us are smarter than some of us. We pray for a world that continues to be paralyzed by this virus. This illness threatens and changes our lives. We thank you for the courage of men and women who treat those in hospitals and clinics, who provide the essential services we need, and who minister to those who are alone, in pain, out of work, or afraid. You are our rock and our strength. You give us hope when we need it. We offer to you prayers for James and Mary Moore, for Beth. And in these moments of silence, we offer prayers that are on our hearts for names we have not named here, but we think of and consider often. Hear our silent prayers. We pray for those who are struggling through difficult times, for couples who are no longer communicating and find it hard to stay together, for children who were struggling in school even before this pandemic, and now they have to go to classroom on their computer at home, for the single mother who doesn't know if her job will ever be available again, for the widower who lost his wife this year and his soul only, for the registered nurse who has to go to the emergency room to work and is anxious about bringing the virus home to her family. For those who have lost faith and are depressed about the future. It is an uncertain time we live in, but we need to rely on you. Like the Israelites, we feel as though we are wandering in the wilderness. We are trying to cross through the pretty deep water and we're not sure what the promised land will look like when we get there. But we know that you are God. We know that you have sustained our mothers and fathers in the past, just as we know you affirm the generations that are yet to come. Teach us patience, understanding, acceptance, and faith to know that the future is filled with obstacles and opportunities for all of us. May we grapple with the obstacles while treasuring the opportunities that are before us. We offer this in Jesus' name, and we remember the way in which he taught us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done.
joy in the spirit, we will go out with God. We will go out with joy in the spirit, we will go out with God. Alleluia. We will go out with joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now anyone who's born of the spirit, sing a new song of joy. Now anyone who's born of the Spirit, sing a new song of joy. Alleluia, we will go out with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. We will go out with joy in the Spirit, we will go out with God. We will go out with joy in the Spirit, we will go out with God. Revere the Lord. Serve God with faithfulness and sincerity. And know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit will go with you along every step of this hard road as we commit ourselves with our daily choices to the God of our liberation. Amen. <laughs>